Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to installing an RC light system in a plane. Now, because this video also encompasses the diamond build from Aviation Design, we are going to get into quite a bit of detail in this video. And this video is centralized around Sky Candy light system that's going in this aircraft. So let's roll that intro and we'll get into it. All right, guys, before you go anywhere, we have a giveaway to do in this video. I told you that we're gonna be doing sporadic giveaways on the channel because this airplane is getting a Sky Candy light system. We are also gonna give away a Sky Candy pair of landing lights. These are a one inch pair of landing lights. Come with a digital switch, about $100 US value. So Canadian is like $150,000, not really, but $130 Canadian. So we're gonna give this away and I will tell you very soon what the entry requirements are. So listen very carefully to some point in this video when I'm gonna tell you how to enter to win those lights. All right guys, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the progression on how the lighting system came about on this airplane. So I knew I wanted to put a light system on the diamond airplane in the last issue, that I think the November, December issue of Jet International Magazine, Sky Candy actually had a, a diamond in there with the full light system on it, and that's basically what I wanted to do. So, here's how the whole progression came about. When I talked with Sal from Sky Candy, he had some pre-made lenses that he was willing to ship to me with my light set, and that's what originally showed up. So these are kind of a harder brittle plastic. I think they are, uh, I'm not sure what they're used for, but I think they're like just generic cones that you can get for food serving and things like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but the lenses on this or the tips weren't overly sharp. So I was willing to work with that because these fit over the tips very, very well. And obviously you're cutting them off at some point and they would have worked just fine, right? So. This was the very first step in the lighting progression. Then what happened when I got these pieces is I thought to myself, what can I do to make a sharper tip on there? I went on Amazon and I found these ring holders. Now this ring holder is missing the piece, but basically these are for jewelers to display rings on. And I bought a package of 10 of these things thinking to myself, I can cut the tip off, cut this off, and glue the tip onto the end and that would work good. So I did that and it looked something like this. The only problem was because we have acrylic and whatever this plastic is, the glue, the acrylic glue wasn't holding this on very well so you could just snap it off. So I knew that wasn't gonna work. All right, so natural progression for me is I always wanna make things better. I have a drive to make things better, whether it's planes or anything like that. So that's what I do. So natural progression for me is I knew that I wanted to take molds of the wing tips because if we use those original lenses that they sent, I would eventually maybe want to try and pull some lenses. So what I did was take some molds, and you guys would have seen this in one of the previous video, of all the tips. So that's what these are. We've got the, the main wings, we've got the rear of the vertical stab, and we've got the front of the vertical stab. So we've got the female molds of all the tips. All right, and then what I did was I thought to myself, okay, well, if I take one of these cones that Sky Candy sent and I chop the tip off and I get some really clear epoxy, put this in the mold, in the blue mold, fill the tip with epoxy, that should create a nice sharp tip, which is what I did there. Now there's obviously a lot of ex excess in there. And the reason it's so bubbly is because I did this and then I pushed it back out and I did it again. But here's a couple examples of how that worked out. And it would have worked okay. Obviously these are just mock-ups and I wasn't being careful and I was messing around with them. That's why they're so ugly. But like this one actually worked out quite well, but there's a fairly strong seam right there as well too, because this cone doesn't quite match up to the tips perfectly. All right, so then what I did guys is I just made the decision that I was going to mold 
wing tips for this thing. So uh, these are already used and they're a little bit abused, but I made some plaster of Paris molds. So I got some plaster of Paris, molded the, the, the three tips, and then what I did was I made a vacuum forming machine. So I did a bit of research on the on, on YouTube, found some cool designs of a vacuum forming machine. I made one myself. I won't go into the details because there's so many videos out there about that. And I just came up with the fundamentals of the design that I wanted to use and I made a vacuum forming machine. So what I'll do is I will throw up some video of that short little process now I gotta give kudos to my daughter, Vienna. She's my youngest daughter. She's the most like me and she's got an absolutely brilliant mind. And she actually came up with the solution of putting the risers underneath the cones to get rid of the webbing. Because I was doing a whole bunch of pulls and I kept getting webbing starting at about here that would come down and that didn't give me enough usable area. I needed the good space to be down about here and then the webbing to start. So she actually drew a, drew a diagram for me. We tried it, worked first try, and that's what you'll see in the video here. Okay, so this time we've added the orange riser on the bottom. This should work better this time, and we'll be a little bit quicker so we don't lose the heat on the plastic. So one of the struggles with using plaster of Paris for these molds is they're quite delicate with the sharp tips like that. So if I was doing a bunch of these for other people or for somebody, I would make the molds out of probably resin, so epoxy, and uh, I think it would work much better. Here's all of the process that went into that, but here's my molds that actually worked. And this is the rear vertical. This is one of the mains, but these all worked out just beautifully. So if you take a look at the mold here, this is one of the wingtip molds. It matches that perfectly. All right, so it was definitely the right way to handle that. And I'm glad that I got to this step and was able to do this. I have never done any vacuum molding before. It was pretty easy. I just have to to have to think about what the solution was. Now this material that I used, it's 060 plastic. Um, it is the... All right, so what do we do to enter this draw? What happens is when this video goes live, we are going to, one week later, we're gonna take a random comment from the description down below or from the comment section of this video and we'll pick a random winner. So, in order to enter this contest, give the video a thumbs up, comment down below. Doesn't matter what you comment, it can be any comment, keep it PG, but it can be done, it can be a full comment, whatever you guys wanna say, but as long as you leave a comment down below, you will be entered and give the video a thumbs up. So that's how we're gonna do the draw for the Sky Candy Landing Lights, guys. These things are nuts, and let's get into the install on this plane. I am super excited about this light set. It is gonna be sick. All right, guys, step number one, I'm gonna start off with the wing tips. Now, if you've watched my diamond build series, you know that I've pretty much run all the wiring, so we're, we're set up that way. Now, what I've done is I've taken this O-ring that's almost the right size as the, as the reflector. This is just a spare reflector that Sky Candy sent to me for this process. So what I'm gonna do is put the O-ring on there mark with a sharpie where the o-ring is going to cut that off with my saw and i want to go not big enough on this step because i want to work into having the right size for this i don't just want to cut too far and then have an oops moment so i'm going to start off there cut this off and we'll see what uh, what happens what it looks like inside all right guys here is the first cut marked off the tip with the o-ring and then here's the second cut that I made. It's split in two, which is fine, but this won't actually fit in there 100% yet because we have the ridges of epoxy to sand out. Now, when I did cut this open, I did have the seam actually split open right in there. So all I did was tape it together and basically put some high sol in there, let it cure overnight, but 
I think this is going to be really close to the right size. I'm just going to do some final sanding to make this nice and flush. And then I'm going to sand the glue out and check the fit of the reflector. All right, guys, first wing tip is done. We've gone just far enough. So the light lens just rests in there. Now I can push this in if I push hard enough, but that's what I'm looking for. And then this is going to slip over top like that. Okay, and then we're going to cut these reflectors about here. We're going to glue all this stuff together, but we're also going to paint these reflectors so we can cover that lens that's sticking out or we can decide how far we're going to go there. But that's kind of the final product. So my marker light, I want to mark or mount on the wing tip probably somewhere about here. The carbon rod goes all the way through, so I can't go right there because there's a piece of wood. But if I go here, that will work good. I could also go up there too. But I think I'd rather be right back there. So I'm just going to pick a spot straight across from the carbon rod, measure backwards, and then just use my awl to cut the hole. And then I'm going to glue this in as well too. Now all my lines need to come out through right there in the wing tip. So I added an extension on there. So I got plenty of added uh, wire length to come through the hole. And then I also added an extension onto the actual landing light just here. And the reason for that is I want the regulator from Castle Creations to be mounted close to the end. So if I ever have to change this light out, I can get the light out and have the connector come out to be able to change it. So that's why I added the extension on there. So I am gonna glue the Castle Creations regulator in the wing tip like that. And then we've got this extension which has plenty of wire that's gonna come out there as well. So I'm gonna get this all put together. First thing I have to do is glue the regulator in and I'm just probably gonna use maybe hot glue for that or I might use uh, goop for it. But we need to get those put in first and then we can glue the other things in. All right, so both wing tips are prepped. The marker light, the, re uh, the red and green marker lights are glued in place. We've got our leads coming out of the joiner portion. And what I'm waiting for is the shoe goop to hold the voltage regulator in place. And then once that's in place, we can take our tip lights and glue them in place. So right now it's just a waiting game for the goop to cure. All right guys, installed the red belly light, the red flasher. I got my wife to hold the vacuum on the underside and I just used my Dremel and made a nice hole. And then I finished it from the belly side. So there it is, finished off with a nice O-ring. If you guys haven't seen the video where I just fired the lights up, that belly light is, it's mental. It's incredible how bright it is. So cool look, it's uh, pretty awesome. All right, so I have put the nose light on. I actually did this a couple days ago just so this would cure. So this is just high salt in place. Uh, Sal made me this custom mount and actually took the electronics out of the light and moved them down the line. So this is high salt in place. I just sanded the, the actual gear strut just a little bit so the high salt would have something to stick to and not just the bare aluminum, it's got some texture. And then we just need to run this up to this side here. So basically this piece right here is usually in the back of the landing light and now it's moved down line a little bit. That light on the nose gear is a little bit lower profile but otherwise the same setup. Now we've got a bit of a different setup here because we're gonna have this switched. So we've got the digital switch here, we've got the normal digital switch hooked into the entire system. Okay guys, so I ran the line up the side of the gear leg here. I actually plugged this all in with it out of the plane just to check and make sure it's gonna work. So obviously it does rub against the side of the gear, but we've got this protective uh, material on there. I might switch the, the zip ties out, or at least the bottom one here for some silver foil tape. But we're gonna put this back in the plane. 
check and make sure that this all works and then we'll check and see what we're going to do about that all right guys nose is back installed everything looks like it's going to work perfect i took that bottom zip tie off tie strap sorry and i replaced it with black electrical tape maybe just a little bit cleaner look a little bit more solid anyways so this is what it looks like when it retracts I did open this up just a little bit here for the nose light itself. Perfect. All right guys, so I glued the main lights in the wing tips yesterday. Uh, I actually used, I was gonna use shoe goop and then I ended up using this E6000 which is almost the same kind of glue and uh, checked it a few hours later and the light was still loose. So what I did was I took some canopy glue, which you use for gluing canopies, right? And poured that in the access hole where the wires come out and let it run down. And it's been basically roughly about 24 hours and I was just messing around with this thing and the light just popped out. So the glue's not sticking, probably because there's like zero air movement inside there, right? The only air movement is the uh, little access hole so that's totally understandable so I'm gonna have to go with a different method I'm probably gonna end up using CA on here like medium or thick CA and that's gonna be a little bit um, stressful because I have to get the light in the right position at the very beginning but it's gonna work and it's gonna be nice and quick so I'm gonna do that and I'll show you guys the results all right guys I've glued the lights on with a little bit of CA and it seemed to work quite well just use some medium CA and that worked great. And I've gotten this pod or this wing tip installed. All right guys, there's the tip installed. Now to mark this out, I just held the Sharpie marker in the one spot with one hand. And while I held it there, I just spun it with my other hand. So we have a pretty straight line. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this tip on all the way around, but I also wanna paint this section with orange. Now I did a test already with the automotive paint that I got to match the uh, diamond orange. I sprayed this this morning and it sticks just perfect to that. So that is perfect. That's what I'm gonna paint those tips with. So when this is all done, and cut and installed and everything, it's gonna look beautiful. All you're gonna see is the edge and the light, I think that's gonna be beautiful. So I think I'm gonna paint these before I glue them on. I'm pretty sure that's probably gonna be the easiest thing to do, but I might change my mind. But anyways, we're gonna get this one cut. We're gonna get the other one uh, marked and cut and we'll go from there. All right, guys, there's a finished lens. I am so impressed how these things turned out. They are absolutely awesome. Now, when I took the molds with the silicone, it actually picked up the uh, the vinyl on the sides. So we do actually have the joint line and the vinyl line. So we do actually have a perfect alignment with the original tip. There it is. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Wicked. I cannot wait to see these things lit up. All right, guys, it's the end of the night and I'll show you my progress so far. So we got the wingtip lights all finished on both sides and I think they look fabulous. They turned out absolutely awesome. I'm really happy with everything and the way it turned out. I might paint that white line just to extend it there. Not entirely sure yet, so we'll see. I did start doing up some of my servo connectors on all the wire bundle down there for the lights. And I also added in the nose digital switch and Put the power lead on there so power lead i just used one of these small what are these called xt30 connectors because that's what i put on the on the airplane side i used hot glue because putting shrink tubing over that wasn't ideal and this is going into the gear controller like i talked about before and then this is the actual nose light plug-in for the gear so the wiring wiring harness is now all ready to go and then the last thing I did tonight was work on the cutouts for the vertical stab. 
and you can see it there. Now, in order to get these kind of level and square, what I would do is I, I cut this off, sanded it down with a palm sander. Then I took a carbon rod, found the center of the rod, ran it across here and made sure that the spacing was correct on each side of the elevator. So that was kind of a handy way just to, to do that. And then the last thing I did was take a, a carbon rod and go from tip to tip and then put the carbon rod on here. And then looking at the two carbon rods parallel to each other, you could, you could tell if one side was closer than the other. So those are basically cut and ready to go. Before I put the, the, the lights in there, I, I need to run my wires and stuff down into this section. And then the last thing is I had to do another plaster of Paris mold because my other one was crappy and my, my plastic lens cover for this wasn't long enough. So the, the lens cover would only come on there a couple millimeters. So anyways, this is still wet, but when it dries, maybe by tomorrow or the next day, I'll pull another lens with my vacuum forming machine from that piece. So that's the progress for tonight, guys. We'll probably get this done tomorrow, but for you guys, it'll be like two seconds. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, next day, and we got a bunch done here. Let me show you what I got done. All right, guys, so the stab, front light, and back light are installed, basically the same process as used in the wings. Had to run the wires through the different channels and everything's hooked up in here, so pretty straightforward. Now, I did have to redo this lens just because the one that I had originally wasn't quite long enough, so I had to redo that lens. I actually did it out of the 040 material and it worked out just fine. It's not quite as durable, but it was easier to mold because it's a lighter material. Anyways, that light's done. There's the rear light there, recess. So this is the one that's more narrow than the other ones, and the flange is, is sanded off or machined off so it's nice and flush i have painted the covers lenses and just waiting for my paint to dry a little bit more and then i can fasten these guys on so essentially that is the final step with all the lights as far as getting them installed the only next thing i need to do is get all my ends crimped and then hook up all the electro connections. All right, guys, we finally got the lighting system all hooked up. It's a bit of a mess in there right now, but I just want to turn it on before I go to bed tonight and check this out. Katie's going to record it for us. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it works because I honestly, I have not turned it on yet. So fingers crossed that this works. Uh, like I told you guys before, and I've shown you, I, I share my fails with you as well. So. Let's see how this goes. All right, so radio's on. Now, pretty much all the lights are off except the two fluorescent ones up there. All right, so I'm gonna plug the battery in now and it shouldn't turn on because the power is not on yet. All right, let's see what happens. Nothing. Fail. <laughs> All right, guys, I checked the voltage and everything. We are good. What it ended up being was I, when I reprogrammed my flap servos, I had the PWM converter plugged in for the X bus port. So it's now on the throttle channel. So I have to rearrange that. But anyways, here we go. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> wow so the nose light isn't on that's probably just because of the system i have set up so let's see here i put the gear up does it come on yeah so it's reversed is the problem okay so we got to get that figured out that's not a big deal but there is the light setup. Oh my gosh. This camera 
does not do this justice, guys, but I cannot look at those things. They are so bright. Holy crap, those are crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. And those tips just glow. That is so cool. So where the light concentrates at the tip, when we look at it from the side, that little tip is just glowing. That is so crazy. Marker lights on the side are crazy bright. <laughs> Holy crap, belly beacon. <laughs> this might show it well too. So you can see the light there. It, it does, the, I'm looking through the little camera on the uh, little screen on the camera. It doesn't show up the same. So when I'm looking at this now, this is clear. Like I can see inside the lens and then the tip is just glowing. That is so cool. And there's our rear. Wow. Man, you guys, these are unbelievable. And there's the green one. Wow. I am happy, thank you Sky Candy. These lights are unbelievable. Um, I wanna get that nose one figured out. I don't know if I can just reverse it because of the way it's working right now. I'll have to figure that out and see what I can do. All right guys, so yes, I did get the nose light figured out. Basically what I did was I just took the Y that I created for the gear channel, rather than running it through the controller, I just plugged the lead from the light system onto the Y and everything works fine. So now when I initiate gear up, the light turns off. When I initiate gear down, light turns on. So very, very simple solution to that. And yes, don't judge. I know I need to clean up all the wiring. I will do that, but I was super excited last night to get this stuff running and we'll clean that up though. All right, one thing I did guys is I just charged the battery up. The reason I charged it up is I wanna see how many milliamps I actually pull with the light setup after about eight minutes of running it. I wanna make sure that this 2200 milliamp battery is sufficient for the light setup and the gear for roughly five runs. That would be about the most I would do in a day before I would recharge. And that's a lot of flights in a day anyways. So we are ready to fire this thing back up again. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like with all of the lights working. All right, guys, here we go. So I'm gonna drop the gear first. So you can see the light there. Dang, that is crazy. <laughs> that's just one of them. <laughs> oh, I can't see. All right, so that's one of the lights and then let's flick the other ones on. <laughs> oh, there they are, boys. There they are, all four landing lights. When the plane's coming in for a landing, that's what you will see. Crazy, absolutely crazy. Love it. Okay, so I set a timer on my phone. Gonna run this for eight minutes and 30 seconds, eight minutes roughly, and we'll uh, recharge the battery and see how much milliamps we pull. All right guys, so here's how things worked out with the battery. So we put 260 milliamps back into the battery. That was with a gear cycle as well. The gear doesn't take much. So if we take 2200 milliamps in the battery times 0.8, for 20% capacity remaining, that leaves us with 1760. And if we divide that by the 260 milliamps used, so divided by 260, that gives us 6.76 runs at eight and a half minutes. So I think I'm okay with that. Um, I could put a bigger battery on. I 
I'm fairly indifferent, I guess. I mean, that's a nice new battery. I don't really feel like buying another battery. I do have a 3000 milliamp battery that's a little bit bigger that I might put on. Um, yeah, we'll give it some thought, but I mean, we've got all winter to think about it. But the, the original battery I picked, that 2200 milliamp battery, does have enough capacity to get at least six flights, 6.76 flights. So we're okay with that if we need to. All right, guys, so that is the end of the video. Don't forget about the Sky Candy light giveaway. Remember, guys, the only thing you need to do to enter that is video thumbs up, comment down below. One week from this video going live, we will take a random comment down below and we'll draw a winner. I'll ship the lights to you free of charge, won't cost you anything. And they are very cool lights, as you saw in this video. So I'm gonna clean this install up a little bit, guys. There's nothing awesome about that, but I'm gonna spend a little bit of time cleaning that stuff up, making it a little bit more presentable, routing my wires and all that kind of stuff. But uh, effectively, this build is now complete. We are ready for our maiden journey on this thing and our final CG and things like that. But uh, super exciting doing this project. Again, thank you to Sky Candy for providing the light set for this plane. Uh, I am so impressed with this light set, Sal. It is amazing. Huge plug for you guys. Um, guys, if you're looking for an awesome light set and you want a custom light set, something that is going to absolutely make your plane stand out, please check out skycandylandinglights.com. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. You can go to their website. Um, they're, they're amazing. So I'm, I, again, completely overjoyed with this light set. It is going to make this plane, this plane alone stands out and it's such a cool looking plane. This light set has brought it to the next level. So thank you, Sky Candy. Guys, if this is your first time finding my channel, hit that thumbs up because you want to enter the contest for the free light set. And also hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.